I'm Daniel Evans back in the studio. Here we're getting ready for our episodes that are going to start season seven that will actually start airing on Labor Day this, this next month in September. Let me start out with the introduction and invitation that we're sending out nationwide, not only to politicians, but to interested people, no matter what their political ideologies, we need the input. We need to know what the bulk of America, not just the 33% in the news <laughs> every day, in court and threatening riots in the streets if they don't get their way, et cetera, et cetera. We'll just leave it at that. We need to hear from the other two out of three. We know what their opinions are, but the two out of three are the ones as the fourth wheel that can control what happens to not only our children's future, but to my grandchildren and now three great-grandchildren's future. Pioneer Valley Access TV event, No Ho Live, Speak Up America. I am inviting everyone forementioned, be they politician or just voting people, to Northampton, Massachusetts on October 8th, that's Saturday before Columbus Day, for a major event. Right now, we're working with the mayor, the biggest motel downtown, hotel downtown, and the street ministries to solidify. I do know this. We will have it open to the public for anyone to come for free. Give your opinions at 1 o'clock in the afternoon till 4 p.m. In the evening, we are setting up a meet and greet. Meet and greet means, let me, I could throw you out some names here. Meet and greet means Representative Lindsay Sabadosa, who was the first one to step up and actually state she was not afraid of honesty and equity. So she's my poster girl for honesty and equity in America. But she'll be joined by the Northampton mayor Gina Louise Sic Sicara, Hoyoke Mayor Joshua Garcia, Northampton Police Chief Jody Katz, and our Lieutenant Governor candidate, Tim Driscoll. Now, this is an ongoing list. These are only the first few people who've committed. Now, we are also sending this out to many senators, many representatives in Washington, and I'm going to make sure it gets to our whole state house legislature. Now, we're also, on top of that, inviting anyone from the president's cabinet who'd like to come with opinions that we should put in this constitutionally in New Deal 2020 about ecology, changing our schooling system, upgrading. A change isn't any good unless it's an upgrade, as we know. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, transportation is a big issue with gas prices, electric cars that they're trying to tell you you can't get one for under 50 grand when you can get a Chevy Volt for under 20 <laughs> to scare people. But these things need to be brought truthfully to the public eye. Now, to continue with that, though, I state on the invitation introduction to invitation, only the elected can determine how we, the people, live. Independence of personal pursuits of happiness may not be infringed upon, impeded, or restrained. I have also stated in the past many, many times, white privilege needs to become human privilege. Well, so does male privilege. I have to modify that. All privileges have to become human privileges. We can't keep being selective of which ones need to be. They all need to be. We would appreciate 
your best thoughts, opinions, and criticisms. This People's Congress event, which I think I'll call the People's Voters event, will present final addition and adjustment to the Honesty and Equity Amendment and the New Deal 2020. I ask all of America's brothers and sisters of humanity to endeavor to find the fortitude of Sam Adams, America's first patriot. We must muster all of our courage. We must summon the fortitude to prevail. And when we look at the brink of civil, civil war in this country that's being bred by the one-third and us being told, as I mentioned before, that if it doesn't go their way, there'll be riots in the street. But how will the powers that be respond? I was a child of 15 in 1968 when all hell broke loose in America in the Bobby Kennedy, Dr. King era. Now, are they going to burn down downtown? Or are they just going to march through carrying AK-47s and the like, like they did at the Capitol building? The two-thirds of us who do not support these people need to cut this off at the knees before it gets there. We, the people, must have all avenues of entry to our vote national voting sites canvassed at a non-intimidating distance, procuring signatures for the 2024 ballot for voter referendum on these amendments. Now, I'll be leaving here uh, the weekend after Labor Day, and my late September stops will be in North Carolina, uh, Bishop Barber's country, South Carolina, Jim Claiborne, Representative Jim Claiborne country, and Atlanta, Georgia, which I'm proud to say this will be my second trip. I think I was there, oh, maybe a year ago, May, and uh, met with Senator Warnock's people. And I didn't get to meet with Stacey Abrams' people, but I'm going to make sure he hooks it up on the list because the two of them, as far as I'm concerned, are the most dedicated people who work for the people, not for themselves, in Atlanta and that area, along with Jim Claiborne and Bishop Barber. They do the same in their arenas. Then I will be back here in Massachusetts, as I said, for our event October 8th. And when I leave out of here, again, uh, the middle of October, before the actual election day comes, the first end of the first week of November, I'm going to go back to my home away from home in Michigan, starting in Saginaw. Uh, I've already been working with the president of the NAACP there, Terry Pruitt, and we will do events in Saginaw, in the state capitol, then I'll move down and do two in Ann Arbor, one in Ann Arbor and one in Detroit, down in southern Michigan. Then I'll go to Wisconsin, and I'll hit Minnesota while I'm there. And on the way in and out, everywhere I go in that region goes through Chicago. So I will definitely be making uh, a couple of stops in Chicago. We will be sending all of this programming back to our programming director here, Liz Walber, who does a great job keeping things going here. And I won't see you folks again after that until the day after Thanksgiving and see what we can do for a aftermath opinions, we'll call it, because the election will be over again. And let's see if this one's a little smoother 
in the lame duck session than it was two years ago. Okay, now, to go on, let me reiterate again. Cures instead of Band-Aids, we the people must decree by referendum ballot and ratify constitutionally the Taylor Floyd Honesty and Equitable Equality Amendment in tandem with the R. Barry Brooks New Deal 2020. I remind you all again, as I mentioned earlier, as the fourth wheel of government, we must end our civilian civil war. So to speak, white privilege must become human privilege. Male privilege must become human privilege. And any other privilege people think they have must become human privilege. Let's put this all in one nutshell. Skin in the game, a piece of the pie, and no one raked over the coal will become reality. The destitute become working poor, working poor become middle class, middle class becomes upper middle class, and the affluent remain affluent. So we're not threatening anybody here. Uh, everybody does better, even the businessmen, because before I go on, let me just explain the basics of how that part works. In section one of New Deal 2020, we eliminate the taxpayers paying for political and administrative and police and court mistakes. What Reagan started saying, well, we've got to protect them from being sued, has to cease to exist. Once you take away what the taxpayers are paying on their behalf, every honest worker that ends up keeping their job can get paid up to 20 to 25 percent more than they are. School teachers, police, it doesn't matter. A clerk at the county court and at the city clerk's office, instead of us paying it for their mistakes, they can also afford to take out their own five million indemnity insurance against getting sued and pay for their own mistakes. And the ones who don't have to pay for their mistakes, guess what? They get to keep that 20% raise because their, their uh, insurance payments aren't going up because of their own folly. So that's how that works. Now, I also have the $15 an hour, which gives everybody over $31,000 minimum for a 40-hour week. But just like they gave loan forgiveness and people are crying about it, well, every businessman can get a 5% tax break for the first year until they look at how it works out for forking out the $15 an hour and the 2.5% were American workers' dividend, which that dividend in tandem with the 30 plus thousand a year. Let's say you work at a 7-Eleven and they bring in $2,000 on your shift, or, or, or any, any uh, convenience store or whatever. That means you get 25 cents, I mean $25 on a thousand in escrow, and if there's two of you, you split it for every worker who worked during those hours. So you each get $25. In escrow, 90 days later, in your quarterly. Now, when you add that by 13, I haven't done the math exactly, but I think that's another three and a quarter. So right there, you're going to get another grand a year plus. And that's at minimum. Who knows the people who work for eBay and, and these giant corporations, including GM, et cetera, and et cetera. <laughs> the airplane companies, whatever. But this is how it works for everybody. And the businessmen are crying, I can't do enough business. Well, people have money to spend. Every stimulus showed. You give them the money to spend, they'll spend it. Of course, there's the other side of the coin. 
we must also as economically savvy people must also tell people, if you're making enough to live off of with your check and you're getting an extra $250 every 90 days, you should save at least half of that $250 because now you can finally create your own nest egg. Because people do tend to just spend, spend, spend and wait for the next one. The biggest problem with American debt is people not saving enough to keep themselves ahead when you give them the opportunity. So there must be an educational program with it, which I have talked to the homeless people for years in this area. And I truly believe not only with our street ministry and our drop-in centers and homeless shelters, but teach our kids from, from say, third grade on in school, third, say fourth, fifth grade, the end of middle school, about personal, what would we call it, uh, personal management skills, which don't include just the money, but includes your physical body, your mental psyche, the whole nine yards. Okay, so we do not only free up over three trillion local, state, and federal dollars. We also create a perpetual stimulus. So people will always have money to spend. And we will never need to borrow a penny. We can get rid of our deficit, never borrow again, and never need the government to give handouts just for people to make it through. These initiatives blueprint the outline and outline the roadmap to socioeconomic and ethnic equi equitable equality. Do the math. Create a deficit-free America. Find amendment readings on YouTube. Enter downtown Daniel Evans and find the, the bio of downtown Daniel Evans at Mass Live, story by Laura Newberry. And on a last note today, I would just like to say the distressing news over the last week or so of what's going on and why and people not wanting to come forth and speak to the people running the hearings and stuff. We will put in New Deal 2020 that no privilege of being a senator or anything else, even, the, even president or ex-president, we're going to put it in plain language, must answer all subpoenas that lead to finding out the truth, period, with no exception. Anyone who can dodge truth can deceive us. And it's a loophole that we, the people, must insist be closed. I'll be back this week with another reading. Have a blessed day. Here I am, downtown Daniel, back again, getting ready to start our new season, uh, the Monday after Easter. And uh, we've got some additions to our local sponsors. Uh, one of them is here at 25 Central. I'll let her introduce herself to the community. And uh, she's also uh, coming on board su supporting our charity for the Tuskegee Toddlers Fund, which will be providing diapers and baby food to the Survival Center. Hi there, I'm Katie. I'm the owner of 25 Central, and I'm really excited to come aboard as a sponsor. And tell us about <laughs> what you yeah. have in your shop. So 25 Central is a staple in downtown Northampton. We have women's clothing and accessories, something for every age, shape, and style is always what I like to say. There, We have a range of prices, you know, things starting at 25 cents and moving on up, and it's just fun, so there's something for everybody. Yeah. And it's wonderful that there's finally a shop in downtown 
that somebody hears, they can start under a dollar. Yeah. As we know, Acme's been the only one. It's good for them to have a twin sister. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, yeah. and you have a blessed endeavor. Thank you, you too. Thank you. And I'd also like to add that we have, we carry My Hats, which is a local company, or a local woman who knits them all by hand, and for everyone she sells, she donates to the Survival Center, and we carry those year round. <laughs> We are blessed with uh, having had a past relationship with Joe where when I was first starting the Tuskegee Airmen's Homeless Veterans Fund, which raises money for the homeless and veterans to help out with food and whatever needs they have, uh, he was kind enough to help me secure some tickets to raffle off from the Celtics. Then he had his expandable brass band play at a show for us a couple of years back after that at uh, the, was it uh, the American Legion, right up behind the high school? Bay, Bay State. Yeah. Right, Bay State. and uh, he has been a local pillar and a definite supporter of veterans and helping out when he can to support the homeless cause. Uh, and uh, he can tell you a little more about how long he's been here or whatever. I've actually been here for 40 years. This year is my, was my 40th anniversary. We actually had a big party out in the parking lot in June where six different bands played. The, I was in three of them. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't the Expandable Brass Band, though. But the Expandable Brass Band is a, it's a really fun group. We had a really good time playing for, the, for that show that you did at the, um, uh, at the VFW in Bay State. Was, uh, it's not really. It's not really my band. I, I, it's it's really a horn band, and I just play tenor banjo in it, which so it's, you can barely hear me most of the time. So the banjo's not loud enough. Well, like we say, it isn't about the one person. It's about the collective sound. Uh -huh. But uh, also, uh, when uh, we have uh, our support, also goes as far as uh, the cathedral in the night, which is an outdoor homeless. Church for the Homeless right here on the streets and we look forward to more of a relationship in the future and I know I'll be here helping out wherever I can in the city and Joe has always done his best to make this a better town and city which we all love to live in. Yes, Thank you. Thank you.